Hi boys and girls, this is Mrs. Kelly and this is lesson 4.2, making reasonable estimates for multiplication problems. Today you will learn to make estimates and evaluate the reasonableness of your answers. This is with multiplication problems, so the products. Okay, get this written in your notebook as well as today's date and then come on back. So here's the first thing I'd like you to do. In your notebook, I'd like you to write down these top three questions here and then answer them. So the first one, how many eggs did you eat in the last seven days? So write down how many you did. And then number two, how many cups of milk did you drink in the last seven days? And three, how many cups of yogurt did you eat in the last seven days? Once you get those written down in your notebook, so pause this while you write them, once you get them done, come on back. You are going to do what it says below, but not quite yet. But go ahead and get this written down. So I want you to use the information from above to solve these problems, but not yet. I'm going to go through the lesson, and you're going to come back to this after a bit. So write this down. I will eat about, and then put a blank there, about blank eggs in one year. I will drink about blank cups of milk in one year. I will eat about blank cups of yogurt in one year. Write that down. Don't spend the time solving it yet. You'll come back after we get going in the lesson, okay? So once you have all that written down, come on back. So here's a page that I thought you might find interesting. It's what do Americans eat? So when we read this through, it says the United States Department of Agriculture conducts surveys to find out how much food Americans eat on average, on average. They ask a large number of people to keep lists of all the foods they eat over a period of several days. These lists are then used to estimate how much of each food was eaten during one year. Americans eat on average more than 2,000 pounds of food per year. That this is about five and a half pounds of food per day. The most current results show that Americans eat or drink about the following average amounts of these foods in one year. So take a look at that list there, the, all the different things and how many pounds on average are consumed in a year. It's pretty interesting. Now, this book is not brand new. So this data may be a little dated. Maybe it's different today if we were to ask people. But this is the data that we're going to use for what we're talking about today. So when you think about um, the information that we collected earlier on the eggs and the milk and the yogurt, I want you to be thinking about whether your estimates will match the average American. Okay? Not quite yet. We'll come back. Um, but today we are going to make estimates for products for large numbers. And you can use close to numbers or you can round your numbers for this. I'm going to be showing it as rounding my numbers mainly. Um, so using the data from this table, the one here to the left, this, about how many pounds of bananas, so 25 pounds of bananas per person, might the students in our class eat in one year? So per person, 25 pounds of bananas, and I want you to use that to figure out about how many pounds of bananas our whole class together, the students in our class, would eat in one year. Give that a try. See what you can come up with, and then when you're ready, come on back to see how I did it. So here's what I'm saying. If an average American eats 25 pounds of bananas per year, I'm going to round that 25 up to 30 because when I'm doing math with large numbers, I like to have one number and zeros. That's what rounding does for me. It makes it so I'll be able to do a basic math fact and then add the zeros back when I'm estimating. It works great. So I'm rounding this 25 up to 30. There are 26 students in our class right now, so I'm going to round that to 30 as well. So then I'm doing this problem, 30 times 30. So I would do the basic fact, 3 times 3 equals 9. Then I've got 1, 0, 2 zeros. I'll add those back on. And my estimate will be 900 pounds. 900 pounds of bananas. Did you get a similar answer? And then let's figure out the real answer. So on my calculator, I just multiplied 25 for the amount of pounds of bananas per year per person, times the 26 of you, and I came up with 650 pounds of bananas. 
So the question then is, is my estimate reasonable? 900 versus 650. Well, it is in this situation, even though that's kind of far apart, it is reasonable because I knew my estimate was going to be high because I rounded up both of my factors. With that knowledge, I would say 650 is close enough to 900 that yes, my estimate is reasonable. I hope that makes sense to you. Let's go on and do a couple more problems. So now this time, using the data from this table, how many eggs might a family of four eat in one year? All right, try and solve that. Pause this, try and solve it before you read my answer. Try and solve it yourself, because that's good for your brain. And then when you're ready, come on back and we'll talk through the answer. All right, here's what I'm saying. So an average American eats about 249 eggs per year, not pounds, actual eggs, okay? So if that's the case, I'm going to round that 249 up to 300 because that, again, has one number and zero, so I'll be able to do basic math and um, put the zeros back, right? So there's only four people that I'm worrying about right now because it's a family of four, so I don't need to round that factor. So then my problem becomes 300 times 4. I do 3 times 4 is 12. Add the, these two zeros back to my answer, so therefore it's 1,200 eggs. Did you get a similar answer? I hope so. What's the actual real answer? You'd have to do 249 the amount of eggs per year, times four, the amount of people we were talking about, and that answer would be 996. So again, is my estimate reasonable? Again, I'll say yes, it is reasonable. I knew my estimate would be a little bit higher than my answer because I chose to round up one of my factors, but it's still close. 1,200 and 996, close enough. I'm saying yes, my estimate was reasonable. All right. You're going to do some more of this kind of problems in your math journal. Um, this is the page that you're going to be doing, so go ahead and get to that. That's page 108 in your math journal. Let's talk through this first problem, and then you're going to do the rest of the page on your own. So the first one says, in finding estimates and evaluating answers, write an estimate and show your thinking. Use a calculator to solve the problem. Check that your answer is reasonable based on your estimate. Okay, so here's the thing. The first one says, a housefly beats its wings about 190 times per second. A wasp can beat its wings about 400 times per second. About how many more times does a wasp beat its wings in one minute compared to a housefly? Well, I could do this problem a couple different ways. So I could say, hmm, well, I'll do um, that 190. I'm going to round that to 200 and I'm trying to go from seconds to minutes, right? Because here it's asking me for a one minute, and this information is given to me in seconds. So I know there's 60 seconds in a minute. So for the housefly, that's going to be 6 times 2 is 12. I've got 1, 2, 3 zeros. So I've got 12,000. For my wasp, I can do 400 times the 60. And that's 4 times 6 is 24, 1, 2, 3, zeros. So I'm not done yet because I'm needing to compare these two answers, right? Because I'm looking for the difference, how many more times it's asking me. So 24 minus 12 is 12. I get to keep the three zeros. So my estimate would be 12,000 more um, Let's see, beat its wings more times. Okay, that's my estimate answer. To do my real one, oh, I'm sorry, and that's just one way. I could have said, well, let me find the difference between 400 and 190, right? And I'm going to estimate that to be about 200. It's actually 210, right? But I'll estimate that to be about 200. And 200 times 60, again, is that 1,200, 12,000 rather, more times. So there we go. I could do it either of those ways. You may come up with yet another way. I then need to figure out my actual answer. So my actual answer, if I did it multiplying on my calculator like it tells you to do, right? I'm going to come up with... 12,600 times. So then I'm comparing this with this and saying, oh my gosh, yes, 
my answer, whoops, my answer is reasonable. Um, so I'm going to write my answer is reasonable. My estimate is reasonable. Is reasonable because it is close to the, actually, is it my answer? What am I asking? Is your answer reasonable? Yes. My answer rather than estimate. My answer is reasonable because it is close to the estimate. Okay. Get comfortable saying that thing. If that's true, then make sure that's what you can tell me. All right? You go ahead and finish that page. When you get that all done, come back and check your answers against the answers coming up. And here are those answers. However, you have to see that they're telling you in a couple different places. These are samples, because you may have done it a different way. That's okay, as long as you came up with similar answers. The answer is very here, because you have to put this in your own words, but you know the words I'm looking for you to say there. I showed you on the previous page when I went over the first problem with you. Again, these are sample answers, but yours should be somewhere around this. Yours should exactly be this. Again, you know what you need to be saying here. There's pretty close to what you should be getting. Here's the actual one that you should be getting. All right. So I can go over some of this with you later. If you don't have the right answers, we'll do that in the lesson. So go ahead and correct in pen, right? Okay. Here's what the home link looks like. Give that a go. When you have it all done, come back and check your answers. I did put them on here for you. And here are those answers. And it's out of 14 because we are counting numbers 4 and 5 down here. So make sure that you tell me how many you got correct out of 14. Then do that as a division problem. The amount that you got correct divided by 14. That will give you your percent. If it's above 80, you're off the hook for the lesson if you want to be off the hook. Otherwise, I'll see you at the lesson.